voice you're about to hear may not be suitable for some. Listener discretion advised. All right now, boys and girls, we want to introduce... Please allow me to adjust my pants. Woo, woo, woo. Listen to me. Run. Run as fast as you can. I'm gonna give you what you need. Get ready for BAM Radio. Let me do it one more time. It's Radio BAM, fucking idiot. What the hell am I talking about? It's Radio BAM. And now, and now here's BAM. Here's BAM. <laughs> That's the best eco I got. Here we are. I'm at Jimmy Pop's house. Lawyers for beer. And I'm with Jesse Mahiras, aka my brother, <laughs> and Jimmy Pop. And we're sitting in this soundproof room. And it's three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, we got drunk at the Trap Tavern because we drove home from uh, New York after a Roadrunner meeting. And uh, Jess and I and Chad Ginsburg decided that we can't drive anymore because it's dangerous. <laughs> so uh, I was like, fuck it, dude. I'm just going to go to Jimmy Pop's house because it's an hour closer from New York City than, than Westchester, Pennsylvania. Dude, so, the worst was waiting in Holland Tunnel traffic. Oh, my God. I wanted to light myself on fire. Jimbo, 7 o'clock, we waited four blocks. To go four blocks to... At 8.30, an we got into the motherfucking Holland Tunnel. Like, yeah. like... One and a half hours? So you got in the line at seven. Yeah. Dude, dude, it was four blocks. Four lousy blocks. And and we literally looked at a green light, didn't move, and then it was a red light. I wanted and then to it was a green light twice. And then it was a red light again. <laughs> and then it was a green light and then it was a red light. And like we didn't move a fucking foot. And I'm like, dude, there's a reason why the fucking twin towers got hit because there's a thousand less cars now on this stupid Holland Tunnel. And it doesn't help anyway. The weird thing about like the Holland Tunnel and the Lincoln Tunnel is every time I'm in them, all I want I have this urge to like lick the tiles <laughs> so, you, know, you would have age and rust i know i'm so into it just like because they're so like they, they look the same way like when saturday night live aired they're yeah. just like all gray and 70s i just want to lick them dude and phil would torture us when we were kids this is how phil was he'd say when we were little like when we were going through a tunnel like that kids if one of those tiles breaks Water's gonna uh, uh, jerk flood you off. Like, they're just, like, they're just you scaring the water shit one like inch that. away from the tiles. Like, Phil oh, shit. Right. The only thing stopping There's it. like 10 foot of cement <laughs> in that shit. Like, there is no way that water's gonna go into that. Phil used to fuck with us. So I know. Bad. We'd be dropping. He used home. to love when he, he would, he would, like, Make us scared of ghosts and stuff. Really? Yeah. He would. He, he was would kind go, of fucked up in a way. He would go out of his way. Like we, he'd take the long way home just because there was a spooky woods. Like, and he'd scare the hell <laughs> out of us, saying there was like seances and like weird. Yeah. Things. What was your first memory of him jerking you off? Or <laughs> I, I remember. I remember. <laughs> um, um, we didn't feel like vacuuming and shit and cleaning the lamps because there was like cobwebs on it and shit. And uh, he wanted to make mom happy because uh, she was working all hard at the hair salon. Trying to make a quick buck to pay because we were like broke is a goddamn joke, dude. I mean, we live across the street from a shit factory <laughs> for 21 years, and we didn't even pay for the house. Like we were still making payments on it for ages. And uh, Phil would, I was like five, and he would be like, uh, he he would be like, I'm the new dad, and he would like turn into like a monster. It's, yeah, like, it's the new dad, like you better vacuum, or, or, He's like, or the old dad will come back. You know, like, vacuum. I want old dad back. You know? yeah. like, well, the new dad's here now, like, and it was. I thought it was so real. Phil, That's Phil fucked with us pretty good, he, but, but yeah, it, it was kind of really muffed up if you think about it. <laughs> you got yeah, back. I mean, Phil rolls though, but yeah, that was fucked. That is. That's Bam's great. still afraid of the dark. <laughs> Not well if I'm by myself. If you're by yourself, if you're sleeping in your house alone, then you're scared. Why do you think I have fucking? Ah! <laughs> Jimbo just turned the lights out. Ah! Plus I have glasses on, so it's extra dark. <laughs> yeah. But no, like I, I have a, uh, I have like nine strangers living at my house. I barely, I don't even know half of their names. They're just skaters from FDR, who are living at the house building a ramp, and. uh I'm so used to having people around me at all times that uh, when I'm by myself, I don't know what to do. No, the weirdest thing is when I would come over for like Viva La Bam and stuff, yeah. and there'd be 30 people there and you're not there. <laughs> and I would just be like, how do you put up with that? Like, you would go hide in your room, 
because we were so fed up with filming. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there'd be, like, Seth would be downstairs, like, building, a, a, like, a gigantic... Like, what are you doing? He's yeah. like, it's a basketball that shoots out monkeys. <laughs> and, uh, it's just, like, 30 people hanging out. It's well, weird. The yeah. best thing about Bam's house is, like, we were recording at the Hobbit Hole a little bit ago, and there was just some dude passed out in the corner. Like, no one knew if he was alive or dead. But no one even questioned it, because it's right. Bam's house. It's like, whatever. Neil Fallon's there from Clutch. Fireball Jim's there. Jazz is on the drums. They're jamming out and recording in the Hobbit Hole, and there's just some hobo in the corner. <laughs> yeah. He was like a homeless dude. <laughs> just passed out. And nobody no even, one like, said a word. tapped him awake to see if he didn't want to hear the noise. Or No one even said, who's that dude over there? <laughs> like, that's there was just no question. Like, it was just like, oh, that's Do you think I, 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 I heard... Out. See, Jack Flanagan is uh, Jess's, well, CKY's manager, and also Clutch and Guar, and, um, and, and Ronnie, Ronnie Specter, Specter. We have to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute, but, <laughs> but, uh, Jack Flanagan said that, uh, Neil Fallon of Clutch was just like, dude, it's I went, I went to, day. I went to Jess's house, and it was day, and then I went to Bam's house, and it was the complete opposite. It was like my night, house night is, as hell. My house like, has like babies and like right. Babies Jess has stuff. two babies with fucking it's baby Einstein playing on the television, talking about like, like. It's like the most this, mellow house ever. This my house. is a watermelon. <laughs> this is a banana. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and guess what bananas and watermelons and, and it, are. And it's on the fucking, <laughs> and it's on the fucking television. And uh, then, then Jess is like, "Yeah, we're gonna go over Bam's house because he has a recording studio." So he he brings Neil Fallon over, and like. There's just hobos in the corner with like, big, with like on fire with like beer bottles ha off. half filled, yeah. tipped over, laying on the dude's face, you know. And uh, <laughs> there's bonfires going on, and there's people building a, a ramp. There's people on four wheelers. There's Seriously, people everywhere. taking shits out in the woods, and he's just like, "What the fuck is going on?" It's like, and I'm used to it. You're not. You don't never get tired of that. That would drive me crazy. Oh, I I, I get tired of shit getting stolen, and yeah. you know what? This, broken. Th this this cocksucker took the hardogram emblem off of my Mercedes on video camera at my house. I have it on fucking film, and I see the g motherfucker's face plain as day, but I don't know who he is or where he's from. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I would like, lay down the law. If, if I saw you at Tattooed Moms in Philly, I'd be like, you're that fuck face who took my emblem, you fucker. But, like, I don't know where he lives or where he's from, so, like... Uh, Maybe two years will go by and he'll grow a beard and I won't recognize him anymore. That's just like, I, I just don't know how you do that. Like, you know me, I like to sit around in my pajamas alone all day. Yeah, that's why I like to come over. I come over to Jimmy, Jimmy's house and I just show up. He likes he likes a phone call saying that uh, you're going to show up so he can prepare himself to spend time. <laughs> I'm like, fuck that, dude. If I feel like going over there, I'm going to go over there and he's going to have to deal with it. Yeah, the problem isn't that you're coming over. I don't get mad that you come over. It's that, well, I want to devote time to our friendship. <laughs> you know, yeah. so that you don't come over and, you know, like I'm See, you're, you're like, coming to catch a predator. <laughs> but you know what, Jimbo? I, I, had, I had no plans on coming over here when I was driving home from New York. And then I was like, you know what? I don't feel like going home. I'm going to go to Roy Rushford. Plus, Missy with the fake baby, you don't have to go home and deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something I'm going to film on a new episode. <laughs> and I'm glad you said that. And I, hopefully I'll listen to this episode in like two weeks so I can re-remind myself. The best thing is, like, we uh, we went to the trap. We were there for 30 seconds. And they're like, <laughs> they brought like a whole wardrobe. Yeah, uh, I have a fleece. <laughs> yeah, they brought like 50 fleece. pieces of clothing. That's crazy. Yeah. It was amazing. And a sweatshirt. Because like you were saying, like when you needed stuff, no one ever wanted to give oh, it yeah. to you. It's and true. then, and as soon as you know, living across from a shit factory, which was my uh, wrestling name in the mid '80s. <laughs> shit factory. Yeah, I didn't win many matches. That's the best. Game <laughs> you didn't win many matches. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and then when you don't need stuff, people just give it to you. <laughs> All right. Speaking of, we were talking about Jack Flanagan, and uh, he, Bam mentioned he manages CKY Clutch and Guar, and he also manages Ronnie Spector, which is. The, what is Phil Spector's ex-wife, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Phil yeah, yeah, Spector's but 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 what did she sing? She has a bunch of like. It was old like Ronnie and the Ronettes, and, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but like, there, there's one song that, that '60s and '70s. No, no, no. Maybe. What's the fucking song? She didn't sing '17, did she? I, I, does yeah. Jar does Jared know? Hey, little. Do you, you know, you know what? what? Ronnie Spector. 
Uh, uh, see, that's what I said. But then they sung the, the song, and I was like, oh, I know that. I could sing you every lyric. Well, well, Little no. type Ronnie Spector into Google and let us know her number one track. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's hear like a 10 second clip of Ronnie Spector right now. See? I told you everybody knows it. See? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, all right. Anyway, Bill, anyway, Bill Spector, he's a nut job. A, a, he killed somebody. The, the chick from Amazon Women on the Moon, which is like my favorite movie of all time, by the way. But the best is when he got his divorce, he was ordered to pay $1 million to his ex-wife. Dude, I think that Phil Spector's nuts, he, and he looks like a whack job. He's like my new hero but for this. the judge was like, you are ordered to pay your ex-wife $1 million, and you need to pay it now. So he got so a he was so pissed. dump truck. He got a dump truck and... Filled it with one million dollars worth of nickels <laughs> and dumped them into the driveway. That is fucking gorgeous. Dude, That's that, brilliant. That is fucking great. Dude, he's my new hero. And I, I looked at him in the tabloids. I was like, what a creep. He's my hero. But, but now I heard that, I'm like, dude, he, I'm going to get a tattoo of his ass. Not only is he a great record producer, but he also does cool things like that. Killing the girl and from Amazon Women. Too, yeah, that's man. hot. No, dude, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't like that because that girl's hot. I don't remember her. But, you know, we were talking earlier about the, uh, speaking of people that killed other people. Yeah. Where you were supposed to have your wedding. Oh, that, the DuPont. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that guy's well, crazy. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. The DuPonts go, whoa, 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 whoa. We just realized that you're filming your wedding on MTV. And, and you're the Bam Margera from yeah. Jackass. And your family They're is, like, we uh, don't know if we can make these two worlds collide. I mean, we're the DuPonts. Yeah. We're all posh and shit. Like... Dude. You're the DuPonts. You guys are crazy. Like, uh, like, dude, the Margeras are crazy. I'll be the first to admit it. But fucking hell, the DuPonts? They're nuts. There's a lady that w wears a trash bag because she doesn't believe in clothes. And, and she just walks around Centerville, Delaware, and they just know her as the trash bag lady. And the the guy that killed the guy was the yeah, yeah, yeah. no black. Like, oh, like, yeah, he hated his, the color black. Gay, he hated the color black and his gay tennis player buddy. Um, no, wrestling. Wrestling buddy he liked funded, another lover, so not he killed shit him. factory, some other wrestler. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, it got to the point where he... <laughs> is that for real? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just talking nonsense. Well, th this story is so fucked up. Rake mentioned on a couple episodes before that there was a DuPont that used to hunt with an AK-47 from a helicopter. That's amazing. He would just annihilate a herd of deer and then fly away. <laughs> <laughs> and then now there's the, the other guy a couple years ago killed his gay lover, which he was the, the partner in this wrestling team that he funded. And basically, because he had DuPont money behind him, the wrestling team made it to the Olympics, and this guy hated the color black for some reason. Like he he eliminated any black things in his house, all his black clothes. One of the dodge. <laughs> That's black. like impossible. Look at this very television. It's black. Well, dude, he what are we gonna he do? Got rid of it. His house had nothing. Spray black painted in. silver for fuck's sake. Well, it got so bad that the, the, two, fired the, the only two black wrestlers. Look at uh, this got sweet fender amp. And the guy's like, you can't fucking fire them because they're. I know. Black. What amp is that? Oh, that's a good ass fender. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a, look. It's a black yeah, amp. What, what are you gonna do? Shot Spray it. paint an orange? An orange amp. Dude. You know what I mean? Like, is that what he did? He just didn't like black so bad. He he didn't want to see the you know what? black. You know what? If I was a Dupont and I owned fifty percent of the state of Delaware, I would start doing shit like that too. I'd be, like, yo, dude. Put me up in a fucking helicopter. I have this AK-47. I'm going to annihilate some deer. I'm going to annihilate every <laughs> moose and deer I see. Yeah. You know, like, I would do that too. Yeah. Speaking of uh, sounds like fun, to be honest. killer homos from Pennsylvania, doesn't he have to go to No Hope today to record riffs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to do drum checks today. Dude, you yeah. better do it, Jesse. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm drinking coffee and everything. And everything. Uh, I All right, see if the mic picks up. See if the mic picks us up. Yeah. Let me try one. Oh, dude, we're in a confined space. Yeah, yeah. We're going down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jimmy made this fucking song. I, I left a message on his machine because we got so drunk of the trap trapper, and I, I called him to make sure he was still alive. And uh, and then Scooter, this guy who you probably don't know, but he's he's huge in Germany so badly that he plays these like techno songs, and Jimmy's friends with him, so. He made this song with my message on it, and and it's so basically it's Bloodhound Gang meets me meets meets Scooter. 
and the song is called Hook Me Up With The Shit That Killed Elvis. <laughs> oh, yo, Radio Bam. <laughs> Let's hear that shit. Faction. Fuck yeah. We're going hot right now. Oh, oh, stop. Your life. Look what we found in Don Vito's ass. This is Radio Bam, baby. On Faction 28. That was Scooter and the Bloodhound Gang with a message from me. And I can still smell your farts. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that was Jimmy Pop. No, it was the combined. We're at Jimmy Pop's house right yeah. now, and he has a studio just like me. So I was like, "Dude, fuck it, let's just do Damn. a show here." I hate to break it to you, because I'm going to Berlin. Better than your rig. Well, <laughs> it's because he sells fucking four million goddamn <laughs> copies, and he can afford a goddamn. Jimmy sound Pop. Uh, I, related to I don't Jimmy want Pop even... at all. Iggy? Yeah. No, I did a tour with Iggy, though. He played my wedding. Did, why didn't you? You I sitting, sat with him. You sat with him at the table, and you didn't even say your last name was Pop as well. I want nothing to do with Iggy Pop. How dare you? I was on a tour with him for a month. Uh -huh. He didn't say hello to me. That's fucked. He got mad at us because we had a better bus. The next day oh, he showed shit. up with a Prevo instead of an Eagle. What's a Prevo? Oh, a oh, Prevo's yeah. a nice one. An Eagle's Eagles what like... Dick. What, yeah, <laughs> Eagle's what like... Uh, Eagle's like a, a pinch Cheap trigger bus. driving right now somewhere <laughs> yeah. in Japan. And, Dude, it's like the Hyundai of buses. But I mean, <laughs> you don't meet a lot of jerk-offs when you tour it. Like, yeah. most people are pretty cool. Pretty this guy good, yeah. didn't talk to us, Reverend Horton Heat. Oh, you tour I love them. I love that fucking He guy. wouldn't talk to them. He wouldn't talk to Henry Rollins. You know, it, what? It, it, it really is rude. I mean, CKY did the same thing with uh, All, All American, American Rejects. Rejects. Like, I fucking hate them. Fuck them. No, no. I like that one song. Can I tell you a story no, about No, no, no. But, like, dude... Like, you guys are busted on All American Rejects, but here they are on MTV. Yeah, I can't move along like you tell me no, to. You know what? They still are around, and that's... Uh, I I called every... Like, every band we toured with, like, Puddle of Mud, I was, like, gone in the ear. You know? And, like, they, they all did, except All American Rejects are still around somehow. Like, were they, uh... Were they jerk offs, or...? Well, this is my favorite thing. We were playing... I like it when you smack my ass. Hold on. Wait a it's minute. Like, dude, I'm on you the know mic. What? Shut the fuck up, I dude. I like it when you smack my ass. Shut the no, fuck up. No, let me tell up. you this you about All American about? Rejects. We were playing New Orleans House of Blues like a few years ago, and they were opening. They were still kind of new at the, at the time. But uh, this fucking kid, they were like 18 or something, and this guy's talking to our fans like they're his. Like He's like, thanks, guys, man. Thanks for yeah, coming thanks out, Yeah, thanks for bro. coming out to see us, and like, blah, blah. And, and he's like... I wrote this song when uh, I was kind of depressed and broke up with my girlfriend. Like it was all sentimental, and the best thing I ever heard. One of our fans yells, "Fuck you, faggot!" <laughs> <laughs> like it's all sentimental, and he's like all heartfelt about it. And some dude's just like, "Eat shit, pussy!" Yeah. <laughs> you faggot, dude. You know what? Is that uh, the story though? Is that why you hated him? No, I mean they were just fucking gay, and I was oh, okay. like, I hate you. And then they stole, yeah, some, dude. You know what? No, they stole some of our beer, and then that was the last draw. And Chad's like, if you come to the show in Pittsburgh, I'm gonna break all your fingers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what, dude? That's I, weird. Chad gave me a greeting card that said that at your wedding. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's dude. how he rolls. No, I, not I, anymore though. I, I, I officially love Chad. I like him so much that I, I. I wanted him to be in the wedding party. Like, I wanted him to walk down the aisle because he changed his ways so bad, and I figured out why. It's he because bought a house. He, it, it, it's because he bought a house. Yes. He lived in gutters. He lived at Pizza Hut. He lived in a he van. Lived in, a van in a and, chicken and coop. Gigi Allen's graveyard. And, yeah. yeah, and he's just he was just bitter and everything. He's like, fuck this shit, fuck that shit, fuck everything. And, yeah. and he would be miserable, and it's like, I don't need to be around negative shit. You know, like, I don't need to deal with this shit. Right. It, it you know? was like and, a loose cannon. Like, it, like, like he, such a loose cannon that, like... If everything was going smooth, he just caused a problem, kind of. Just because. Like, yeah, just because he felt like Oh, really? He, but now, yeah. now I figured out that... He, he pulled a 180 he, now. He has a nice-ass house, and he feels comfortable, and, uh... He finally has a place to call his he own. He feels like, like... Like, when you're paying rent, like, you know you're going down at one point. And you're going to have you to know? move like, soon. He has a house now. And, 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 right. and he's just mountain, like, dude. and he's like, I don't really have to worry now, and 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 now he's like nice, and and I I have, even Missy, well they're both Jews, so they get along so well, but she's like, let's go, let's go, let's go visit Chad. Like, I like, like you Chad. don't get along with him because of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like, dude, yeah, but J if you tell Chad like fuck Jews, dude, like he'll be like fuck you, motherfucker. Well, who pussy. would be psyched to hear that? Everyone well, I can I can say that to Missy though, and but she'll laugh say, it off. If someone was like, I'm fuck Italian, Italian I'm good. Italian and like, I'm Irish. Care. I'm Italian and Irish. If you go. Fuck Italians, they're fucking stinky faggots, like, and fucking ooh. Irish people are fucking redheaded homos. I'd be like, 
Well, I'm Irish and Italian, and I don't care what you just said, because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, I'm American. Yeah, life's too short to get bent out of shape about yeah, like, crap why, like that. Why, why would I, I care? Understand See, that. I never saw, I, I didn't know Chad that well, not that he's dead. I base people on <laughs> personality, <laughs> like, it, like if, if I didn't like you, Jimmy Pop, I was like, I, was like, I fucking hate Jimmy Pop, he's, he's a jerk off and, he, and I don't like his personality. I wouldn't be like, which is nationality? German American oh, and overweight. German American? Well, <laughs> well, fuck German Americans. They're fucking faggots. You know what I mean? Like, I would be like, it's, it's not because he's German American. It's because I don't like his personality. But it is just crazy how Chad pulled a 180. Like, I used to be the mellow guy. In I the love CKY, it. And now he mellows dude, me out. Dude, it's cheers. It's like crazy. Cheers to Chad. Awesome. It was the biggest 180 I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, like, to the point where... I noticed it. It made the band so much better to be in now that he's You know when, like, like, you'll see somebody every single day, and then all of a sudden they'll have short hair and then long hair, but you don't notice at all? Right. Because you see him every day? Right. But, like, I noticed with Chad, like... Because you were away from him for a while. Yeah, and right. then I just see him again, and it's just like, why the fuck are you being so cool? Was he always <laughs> that intense, like, even before, like, yeah. your first DVD Good. came out Good. or yeah. anything? I, I, I liked him when he had that red hair when, when when you guys were doing CKY1 in the studio. I liked him then. And I liked him when we were doing the Brands Freestyle yeah. uh, that day. But then there's a whole period of, of maybe two years where I was just like, he's a fucking jerk-off dickhead, dude. Well, like, you know what? Like, he, he, needs, he needs to stop fucking analyzing shit so bad. The latest record that we did, Andrew Can Be Found, was like the most hellish process on earth, and everyone wanted to just kill themselves because it sucks so bad. Right. But then as soon as it was done and out and complete, then, then that's when he was like, happy dude. You know, like, yeah. moved back to the East Coast, bought a house. Records out. He's just sucked. dude. Dressed in Decay is the best song on that album, man. He, I think that's the one. Bass of the best riff songs is the ever. fucking best. He always seemed really cool to me. So, yeah, he's, he's, and how are his new riffs? Uh, Chad and Darren. You know what's yeah, funny? Riffs, you awesome. just say that. Chad's been so cool to me all the time. See, now somebody else would be like, that guy Chad has been a fucking dickhead to me all the time. Like, and you know, like I mean. Let's face it. I mean, he'll sip on whiskey and then he'll pop like an Adderall and then a Valium and then this and then that and like, y you never know how he's gonna wind up. He sorted himself out. Like I, I figured out. We're talking about. I figured out the method of drinking, dude. Like I used to drink like vodka and grapefruits and stuff, and then I would like start drinking Jack and Cokes. Fuck all that. And then shots of Crown Royal. Sip like on beer. Dude, if I just shut the fuck up and drink beer all day as soon as I wake up. I'm never obnoxious. I'm. I never. Well, I'm talking shit right now, but I, <laughs> I never. I never like. But you're not out of control. Yeah, like yeah I'm not. Off. I'm not out of control. I won't go flipping this amplifier over like for no reason. Like uh, yeah. when I was on whiskey, I would piss on the Iron Hill window with my dick yeah, hanging out. Yeah, that's when you were uh, out of control, and and I had a little intervention with. Happy Tom from uh, Turbo Negro. Yeah, Happy, Happy Tom and Villa Vallo. Villa Vallo. Villa's the biggest you know fucking what? drunk known to me. That's another you said thing. Your brother's out of control. Jess, you have to get on the phone with him, and and we, me, you, and Happy Tom will just have a conference Dude, call with him and sort. Villa out. wakes up <laughs> wakes up to a beer before he's even a fucking wake. Yeah, but he has one on standby taped to his head. Lemmy. But who? Lemmy. Uh, Lemmy. Dude, Lemmy from Motorhead was doing an interview, dead serious, and they're like. So let me like you drink a lot of Jack Daniels and whiskey and whatnot. Like, how do you deal with the hangovers? How do you deal with the hangovers? He goes, hangovers. <laughs> well, you got to be fucking sober to have a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> like, he he like, missed a beat. He's just like, like I'm always drunk. He's always. been drunk <laughs> since day the one. 70s. He never <laughs> let one fucking living second go by without <laughs> not being drunk. But like 2004, and that is gorgeous. When Bam yeah. was was raging the whole year. Yeah, I think that was probably like the the period. Yeah. And like he was acting like you know, a, a jerk to me or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, what are you talking about? I don't hold grudges. What do I, I want to know about you? these dudes? What dude that doesn't chug dick? Like, holds a grudge that long. It's like, well, Ben was mad, mean to me, yeah. and we should have an interview. Everybody has a bad day. Like, well, bad it, guy, oh, yeah, you know? th that's the thing. Like, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm one to apologize. Like, like for instance, I had a big falling out with Chad. I was like, you're a fucking piece of shit. Like, CKY, what are you talking about? I'm CKY, motherfucker. I made CKY one. He's like, I'm CKY the band. I'm fucking better. I'm bigger. And, you know, I'm like, fuck you, you fucking jerk off. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And then, and then I flew to Australia the next day thought about it all in the airplane and then I was like you know what I'm gonna call him. and I called him from Australia and I was like Chad sorry for saying all that stuff like I, I was probably drinking whiskey and I didn't mean half the shit that I said and he goes dude I appreciate the apology 
And you know what? That's something that Darren Miller would never do, dude. Like, if, if, he, <laughs> if he killed your mom, you'd be like, you killed my mom. I want an apology, motherfucker. She shouldn't have been there. <laughs> you know, like, he I will never that. apologize ever, 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 ever. I believe that whole story you just told, except the part about your phone working in Australia. <laughs> no, I, no called, I, called, I called from the hotel. Dude, motherfucker, I couldn't get my shit to work there at all, dude. It was, like, stupid. My phone works everywhere. I don't know... Are you, How do you do it? I get little to do it. Well, God damn it! hire me, Little. My phone doesn't work in fucking Canada. Really? <laughs> Probably not. Does Little have time to fucking do that shit for me, too? I'll, I'll have Phil write him we a check. Get some fucking yeah. chip or something? We can get into that, but I want to hear more about the riffs, the CKY. Everybody's getting along Fuck now. Fuck you, Jimmy. You're here. Talk about Bloodhound Gang. I don't want to talk about Bloodhound Gang. No, dude. You're doing singles now. What's yeah. up with that? Because of yeah. iTunes? Well, singles is where it's at right it now. It is, kind of. And that way you don't have to sit in the studio and hate each other for six months. You can record, so tour, true. record tour, record, tour. I think every I, I band think the worst, release like four singles a year. No, no, no. The worst formula ever is writing like four-track demos, whatever, getting the songs down, and then going into the studio and powering it out for three days to save money and like everybody's hustling and playing songs all quick and trying to get the riffs done and mix it real quick and like save money save money save money and then it and then yeah. it turns out like a rushed piece of shit i would say do three songs wait three months write three more awesome songs write three more songs well, dude and the album format is becoming irrelevant almost yeah. like things are going backwards like remember in the 50s and 60s like i wasn't alive but they had singles that's it nobody really had albums that's how it's going to be again and we never did demos you know, because yeah. we knew, oh, we can record this again. It's just gonna sound shittier. And like, ha like <laughs> with him, how many of the demos sound better than the? Oh, dude, you know? Know? Yes, dude, dude, Jimmy, I'm not kidding. I All listen to the other metal. fucking demos so much more. Like Deep no shadows. Okay, no love metal. The the demos of love metal, which no one has ever heard. Yeah. Are, I'm telling you, man. I've heard him. Well, Jimmy's heard him. Oh, that wasn't Jimmy. That was Mr. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, wonderful. Jimmy. It's it's like so much more raw, meaningful, and and it, like Pete Doherty said it best. Like I like the little fucked up mistakes when when like my That's guitar player when my guitar player is all fucked up and he misses a, a quick little note. Yeah. And then it's off beat for a little bit, and then he comes back in. It makes it uh, like a, a better. A perfect album is kind of a boring. perfect. Pro Tools, like, fix that little mistake. Yeah, it's almost it sucks. boring. And you know what? I, I like Led Zeppelin records because fucking Bonham would miss a snare hit every once in a while. And long. you know I what? I like that. I spent, it gives a character. I spent this whole day here uh, from 11 in the morning until 3 o'clock, and I watched Little, who is uh, Jimmy Pop's engineer who does the Pro Tools. He shows me how you could just put... If I sing off beat like, uh, 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 like you could tune me in and make me sound awesome, just like Paris Hilton, who put Lohan out a Lindsay out. Lohan. <laughs> dude, I'm yeah. calling you out so fucking hard, dude, because <laughs> Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton, they put out albums who other people write the fucking lyrics and then and the music. go in and, 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 and the music. They have no talent whatsoever. They just they just go in there, sing off key, and some douchebag puts them on fucking key just yeah. because they're pretty. Enough That's about it. me. Tell me about Paris Hilton. <laughs> 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 no, I'm serious, dude. Yo, and you know what? If I, I mean, bump but, into them, I'll tell them right to their fucking face. Hey, I heard you were talking shit. You know what? I'm not talking shit. You officially can't sing. Can I tell you my theory about demos, why some demos are better than the yeah. album? I think it's because when you go do a demo, you just throw the mics up and you just do it quick and easy. And sometimes when you just do that, it's better than when you overthink it and fuck try yeah. to get it perfect. Dude. And then it's not as good because people, you overanalyze people it. People who overthink always fuck up so bad. You know what? Just shut up and do it right now and don't even think about it. Just like MTV, they're like, well, if you're walking into a bar, then we need to have a camera waiting for you on the inside coming in. It's like, that's not reality, dickface. <laughs> reality is me walking in with you following me from behind. Like when we were recording uh, that la last record, like uh, the, the first day of cutting drums, a whole day was spent tuning my drums, we got all scientific with it with tension watches, drum doctors in there, and we worked our fucking dicks off to make the drums try and sound as good as it possibly can. And it sounded good, but then for shits and giggles, I was like, dude, I'm just gonna set up my other kit in that other room and just see how it sounds, you know, why not, fuck it. So I did two takes, one with the... Just on spare time? Yeah, like, we had some extra time, and I was like, I'm just gonna recut the songs just for shits and giggles, and we'll just throw the mics up, and, and we spent an hour versus 24 hours. Right. And the hour shit turned out better. 
Like, yeah. there's no science to it. It's always how it works, dude. You know what? It's all about chemistry. It's all about, like, the mood that you're in. If you just, it, like, I hate it when, when the uh, MTV overanalyzes everything and they're like, well, we need to think about how this is going to cut into the next shot. I'm like, you know what? If you just shut up and film, it's going to have to cut into the next shot because yeah. that's reality. Yeah, exactly. and it's also, like, what you prep, like, what you do ahead of time. Like, you know how you draw your ideas out on yeah. paper? Yeah. Like, that's enough. Like, right. you don't have I to, know. like, be like, well, um, you know. And you know what? I bet you a writer who was hired for Warner Brothers would never get paid for, for drawing a fucking lousy picture like that on Jackass. Right. Yeah. Like, they would be like, what? You're just drawing lousy one-minute pictures? Like, you can't get paid the money that you're getting for this. I want to have a major description. It's like, you right. don't need it. Just you know, draw a stupid picture real quick. Right. Everybody get the point. And I also don't like how MTV just have a formula of all their shows. Like Every just, show is the they fucking a, same. A, a script and a formula. No wonder their their fucking ratings are going yeah, down. Because it's it's a job to them, and no one likes their job really. And 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 they just follow their same formula. And then when Bam comes to them with all these weird fucking ideas, they're like, "What, dude? What?" what the and fuck? you think some fucking cum stain? That's what makes it cool. Some cum stain from Laguna Beach is like. Do you think that they would ever? Cum stain. Do you think that they would ever be like? Yo, uh, you guys should play like Turbo Negro and it's like we're gonna play what the Warner Brothers sends us. Yeah. You know, like we're gonna play the tracks that they send us. It's like there's no heart in any of it. T V people and music people, here's their formula. They oh, suck. Somebody goes out and does something different and interesting and then immediately they're like, Let's oh, water we it down. Find that. And then they just there's like a hundred copycat bands that just right. do that winning formula. And then it's just like it just ruins it. It's like shit. Like I emailed uh I drew a picture for season two of Bam's Unholy Union where I'm eating out Missy, nah. and uh, they just never responded. Uh, like, well, all right, guess that won't happen again. <laughs> Did you really do that behind my back? What? <laughs> what kind of friend are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm a good one. I give you Mickey's. How do you like the Mickey's? Oh, dude, it's great. Oh, he gives me a Mickey's and then he eats out Missy and expects me to be happy with this lousy beer. <laughs> it's malt liquor for pizza. I might trade Yingling for that Mickey. Show. What am I, black from Pittsburgh? <laughs> Bam, Bam be says my beer that I love tastes like rust and age. Dude, Yingling is an insult to Pennsylvania. God, I love and it. You, and you know what? You know what? Fuck Yingling. It's an insult to Pennsylvania. Rolling Rock's pretty cool and it's from Latrobe. But, dude, that Yingling shit tastes like rust and AIDS. It, it tastes it. like rust and fucking AIDS. Let's Who's play a song because I want to get a beverage. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've been dying to do that too. Alright, what do you want to play? Um. What, what do we have on standby that we want Hell to do? Hell Train. Look, oh, what we got? Fucking Hell Train. Explain who they are and where they're from and how you sign them. Yeah. Enough about Mickey's, let's play a song. Hell Train <laughs> are from Sweden. They were in a band called, uh, it doesn't matter, but they were like death metal. Yeah. And then they decided they just wanted to play like Misfits chords and scream over it. And you know what? Yeah. It fucking works and it pisses me off that I bet you everybody listening right now has never heard of it. But let's play it. Oi! On Radio Bam, Faction 28. <laughs> check this out. You need to come check this out, man. Say hello to everyone. Hello to everyone. Can I talk? Yeah, what's up, everyone? I didn't know you were recording this shit. <laughs> it's, it's, on. it's on. It's on the radio channel now. No. Yeah. You're fucking kidding me. You can't say that. I'm sorry. Serious 28 Faction. <laughs> All right, that was Hell Train. Hell Train from Sweden. Sweden. Route 666. Well, oil, Jimmy Frank's recording company. <laughs> how did you? How did you find that band? Yeah, they live in the Arctic Circle. How'd you make that trip? You know how, except for you, and sometimes when you bring Jess, I don't hang out with anybody. I just sit online looking for... Uh... <laughs> Dude, you spend fucking 80% of your life in jammies. What's wrong? I'm Lou Hefner, his ugly cousin. <laughs> See, dude, but no, no, I, I can relate to that because when you're in a touring band, when you tour, that's fucking work. I mean, it's fun as shit, but it's work. Yeah. And, and when you come home, it's basically your vacation. And also, I take, you know, at the end of a tour, I'll stay somewhere. So, yeah. you know, in Berlin or wherever we are, and I'll hang out. So I enjoy coming home and not doing shit. Because, right. let's be honest, who wants to, like, when you, when you, like, uh, when you've been on the snorkeling climb in Copenhagen, like, do you really want to go to the Trap Tavern every night? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. you know? Well, I know you do. But I wanted to ask Dude, you. Dude, I've been on a fucking bender, man. I'm into it. I, 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 just, I just like waking up and having people all over the place. There's always something to do. I, I think I get scared when I'm by myself. You'd be terrified if you woke up in your house alone. Like, what do I do right now? You know what? You know what? Though I must say, the only time that I'm officially alone is uh, when I'm on like an airplane. 
No, well, not, well that, but that, I'm not going to write shit when I'm taking a shit. I've been in there. When are you alone? I'm, I'm alone when I'm on an airplane for five hours fly, flying from L.A. To, to Philadelphia, which is mostly where I fly to. I fly other places, too, but, but that's the only official time where it's just me. And I'm so fucking productive when I'm, when I'm sitting there because I'm just forced to sit there like a dipshit, sip on a red wine, a.k.a. creative juice, and then I come up with, like, jackass ideas. I come up with Bams and Holy Union ideas. I come up with Viva La Bam ideas. I come up with fucking new movie ideas. I come up with fucking maybe redoing Arthur. And you can't you can't do that when there's people around is what you're saying. Because so, because there's no time for me to think about that. I'm having too much fun with you right now to even think about redoing Arthur. So all... Wouldn't it be better than if all those people weren't there? No. No, no, no. I like... Dude... I would never change anything, anything about my life at all. Like, I've done my fair share of cool skateboard tricks. I've done my fair share of drinking. I've done my fair share of filming. I've done my fair share of photo shoots. Like, you know... Uh, well, I think if I was life, you... Life is too short to, to spend your entire life lip-sliding fucking handrails. The only thing that... Um, you know what I mean? I would change about your life is... Uh, get rid of that mean-spirited tramp stamping ex-girlfriend because she was always mean i know sometimes she was really mean i know yeah dude i couldn't agree more and you know what i was i was scared of breaking up with her and 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 the jessica simpson thing happened for a reason because bam i threw a party when you broke up with jen like, well, 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 a rager, like, dude you know what he's free. that that got blown way out of proportion but all in all it was meant to be because that was the official reason for Jen to break all my shit and get the fuck out. Yeah. And, and that was the reason why I didn't break up with her, because I was like, dude, if I say get out of here, I don't want to be with you anymore, she's going to destroy all my stuff. Yeah. And I like all my stuff. Yeah. You know, but once she did it already and it was too late, it's like, well, that is the key to get this is done now. You just gave yourself I knew, to I knew yeah. once that Jessica Simpson tabloid shit came out, I was like, this relationship is officially over. Yeah. Before we'd get back together, we'd argue, we'd we'd make compromises and get back together. That made it officially fucking done. Yeah. Like like. What good know, way to make it done too? We will yeah. never be together again. The you know. Final like, nail in the coffin. Yeah. Like when I went totally, in a relationship, yeah. it ends with me like dropping loads in my own mouth, and he like, <laughs> ends it with Jessica Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> so about Missy's pussy. Anyway. <laughs> what do I want to know? Uh, I don't need to know anything, bro. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, uh, all right, let me, let me, uh, just because, you know, usually you have all the guys that are in your world all the time hanging out, so I want to know a few things. When can I expect Dream Seller? Yeah. Okay, um, this guy Calvin, who, uh, he runs Bodog.com, and he lives in Costa Rica, and he's a motherfucking billionaire. I had dinner with him at Koi Restaurant in Los Angeles, and uh, I basically had a few drinks with him, shot this shit, made him laugh, and he goes, you know what, I like you, what do you need? And I go, I have this movie, I want you to read the script. He's like, I don't even need to re read the script. How much money do you want? I'm like, I need, f <laughs> I need five million dollars. And he goes, done. And then the next day I was like, what a fucking full of shit piece of shit you know like yeah right he ain't gonna give me five million dollars the money was hey, in the account already <laughs> the money is in the account right now as we speak cheers to him yeah. he didn't even read the script he, he just he had talk shit. he just had faith in me that I could make something good yeah but you know what uh, Joe Franz wrote the script well Novak wrote the story of his life right then Joe Franz transformed it into a script then these uh, Hollywood dudes had a shot at it and totally made it like a, a Tony Hawk skateboard stuff. And I was like, dude, I don't even want Tony Hawk in it. Like, I want to mention his name maybe once, but I don't want it to be based on fucking Tony Hawk. You're trying to make something that hasn't been made before. Right. That's what people don't understand. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I want to see Novak, like, hopped up his fuck in Baltimore being a piece of shit. Like, briefly tell people that he could have been a professional skateboarder but he threw it all away we don't need to show him like skating and you right. know like yeah. fuck that man so it's basically going to be a dark comedy <laughs> that's exactly so right that, and you know what dark comedies are hard to do but I have yeah. faith that it's going to work out now what about the uh, other movie Kiss a Good Man's Ass which is now called I can't say because uh, I don't need anybody copyrighting it and shit uh, can you yeah. talk about the cartoon yeah 
and that uh, we just did a, a cartoon. Uh, it's a pilot. It's 13 minutes long. The animation is fabulous. And uh, Disney people are doing it. Dude, I just love. You know what I love? I love that it's it's D. Camello's thing. Yeah. It's his project. He loves it. Yeah. And and basically, the only thing I need to do is spend like half of my Wednesday going into a fucking studio. Right. And yeah. going like. Yo, Tico, what the fuck's going on? Da, 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 da. You know, and then, like, it's just me doing voiceovers, and then some dude in New York draws me up and, and makes a cartoon out of it, and it makes me look super productive, but really, so I only spent half of my Wednesday. And and to be honest, in a world full of people that don't know what they're doing, it was great being on a conference call with ten people, the yeah. youngest of which was D. Camillo, and he was in charge telling me how to write the dude, theme. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, so, it's so time for Dico to get And what else? Too. Like... I'm so fucking sick uh, of going to your, your you know shoots what? to like Viva La Bam and stuff and like seeing Deco just give fucking gold all day. Like I'm like pissing well, my pants. Well, MTV down. always wants to overshoot to yeah. be safe. Right. And being safe is fucking dangerous because then they have all this stuff. They're so concerned about the story that they're not concerned about the comedy. Yeah. The comedy is what you should show. Exactly. Fuck the story. Like, right. dude, I, I, I'll be there for a couple hours. Like, Jimmy, they'll actually say, well, if we're going to film you at Jimmy's house doing this, how are we going to show that you made it back to, like, Westchester to your house? It's like, well, that's what the fuck happened in life. So you're going to have to make it work. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, th no, we need to do a pickup shot of you getting off of the Royer's yeah. Fruit exit. It's like, no, but dude, we I don't need that. I Yeah, yeah like when we just, track Narkill shit, he, he he doesn't even hear the music or anything. He just goes, and if the song's three minutes, he's there for three minutes, and then he leaves. By the way, any uh, Bam listener out there, I will, will put together a Bloodhound Gang prize pack if you make your yearbook quote, "Go Jamal is a mini machine." <laughs> Go Jamal is a mini machine. If you were there, you'd be rocking the scene. Now take off your drawers and fall in love and rip your ass. From up above now, what a double dare What's the fine flag? Buried deep in the ass of a fag. Chaka Chaka, no baby roof. Don't hold back for Mother Goose. Yeah, where's the fucking golden egg? Yeah. <laughs> what, what about a set off the fire alarm? No, pushing Mars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, his brilliance is good to see in the you cartoon. It's finally coming you out. You know what? He's an official genius. And you know what? Eminem has thirty million dollars or whatever. And and he, I I agree that he should have that because he's fucking brilliant. I barely even listen to rap, but you know what? He's the motherfucking man. I'm not into rap much either, but Deco is also awesome. the motherfucking man. But geniuses are fucked up in the head, and and Deco doesn't care about flying to L.A. to money, to, fame, to sign a twenty million dollar deal. Yeah. I could be like Deco, hop on a flight, sign a t twenty million dollar deal. You'll be just like Eminem. He like, I'd rather go to Kmart. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, and he yeah. officially is at Kmart when he's telling me this, and, and he doesn't have any of that. He doesn't want any of that. He doesn't have any jealousy. He doesn't give a fuck. Two of his best friends, you know, are on Jackass and everything. He can't be bothered. It's just the yeah. the most interesting thing. He just needs to do what he has to do, and, and you know what? I couldn't appreciate it more. Really? Yeah, he's great. He's just a brilliant fucking person who wants to live his life in Pennsylvania With without really any vision. fucking fanfare. He does not want anybody noticing him at all anywhere yeah he wants to drive his fucking i don't even want to tell you what he drives because i don't want people trying to go to westchester and looking for him <laughs> because dude, he doesn't want it the best is like when, when we we're setting up a, a record like a little bit ago like of course the record label is just like oh we gotta do a commercial and it's like the most boring typical commercial clips from the music video it's like featuring the track all right blah, blah. it's so fucking boring so I was like, no, we're not doing that. We're getting fucking DiCamello to be a, a goddamn, uh, like, uh... Spokesperson? Yeah, like, uh, you know those cheesy infomercials? Right. Like, he's wearing this fucked wig, and he's just like, get the new KKY album now. <laughs> like, you know? They're like, and it was so fucking funny, and, and we sent it to the label, and, like, they just didn't get it. Like, it's just that's so dumb. But, but when it aired on TV, the kids were like, that's the fucking best thing I've ever seen, you know? Like, Dude, you know what? There's so many jokers working at 
places, particularly MTV, like, they've said so much fuck shit that, it, that they'd be like, you know what, like, there's, there's probably 20 stupid motherfuckers hired at MTV to do absolutely nothing, they don't know what they're doing, so they just do stupid research, like, uh, Pennsylvania.com. Oh, you have to wear a seatbelt in Pennsylvania? Oh, notice that BAM doesn't wear a seatbelt. BAM, when you're filming BAM's Unholy Union, you have to start wearing a seatbelt because the state of Pennsylvania says that you need to wear one. I filmed 44 motherfucking episodes of Viva La Bam driving around at full speed in a Lamborghini with no seatbelt, and I've never had anybody say anything, and now I need to wear one? Fuck yourself. Yeah, like, <laughs> like Tom Cruise in a movie has to wear a seatbelt. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and you know what? I've already done 44 episodes, and I'm going to argue this one. I pick and choose my arguments with, with MTV. I mean... You're not going to win them all. Dude. You, you yeah. can't deliver an episode. Even if the episode was perfect and there was no cuss words or whatever, there needs to be somebody hired to say, this needs to go and we need to do a pickup shot of this. Because otherwise they feel like their job is worthless. Because if they go, good, to go, good to go, loved it. Good to go, loved it. They spent nine to five all day on a Wednesday saying good to go, loved it. Right. They, they need to show the boss that like, this needs to go, the seatbelts right. need to be worn, like... Then they go, look, boss, look at look at all the <clears throat> notes that I've made when they're all fucking worthless. But I can tell that you started yelling a lot more as opposed to just not caring because like Bam's Unholy Union is yeah. is better than season five of Viva La Bam. Yeah. Like, cause there, I remember going down and like I said, no one would show up on time or not or just not right. show up at all. It because because it, 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 <laughs> the, it, there was a formula and the formula was Ryan Dunn, Rab himself, D. Camello, and Ray Kian all had to show up from nine to five, and. And uh, I don't want that anymore. I want I want to be like you know what? I want to wing it. Today is Friday. We're filming. Hmm. I feel like hanging out with D. Camilla today. I'm gonna call him up and see if he wants to film. You know, like absolutely. And if he's busy being at Kmart, then I'll fucking call up Dunn or I'll call up Jimmy and I'll be like, hey, want to film today? Or I'll call up fucking Novak. Like. Hence the term reality show. Right? Yeah. Right, right. You know what? People showing up from 9 to 5 is not reality. Yeah. Reality is me calling people up and saying, you want to hang out? When I'm at your house and they're filming us and I say something, they're like, Yo, dude, do what you just did again. No. And you can't tell them, like, they can't hey. go back. I know. Like, you can tell them how many copies of CKY you guys sold. That was you and Deco and Jess with the camera off the cuff. It was Like, fun. don't you understand that this works? No, yeah. no shit. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but MTV has probably never seen any CKY videos at all. They, they have no they, idea. They probably just go, oh, Bam's a skateboarder who does funny jackass stuff who sold a bunch on jackass. Yeah, let's let's have him do his own show. They don't know shit about. They that have never stuff. popped in CKY 2K at all. I bet. Which is brilliant. Thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even the producers. Oh man. This drove me insane. <laughs> the first episode of Viva La Bam, which was uh, the skate park driveway when Ape and Phil went to yeah, Atlanta City. Right. DiCamello and Raytheon were, were dressed as limo drivers to take Ape and Phil to Atlantic City. And the fucking stupid English bitch who was hired to, to be the director was like... DiCamello had their luggage going up an escalator at the Taj Mahal. And uh, she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't need some random limo driver bringing their luggage in. It's like, random limo driver? It's fucking DiCamello from the... He's yeah. in the show! He's not some hired limo driver, you fucking idiot! Do your motherfucking research You're first! fucking fired. You know what I mean? Get fired? Oh, You're I fired. fired the fucking shit out of her. Really? <laughs> like, how many episodes did you do? Just that one! One! <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, as soon as Deco said, I'm in Atlantic City because I wasn't there, I was at home building a ramp. Well, I wasn't building a ramp, I was watching people build a ramp, but... Yeah. I was, he's like, I was carrying Abe's luggage, and they go, we don't need a random limo driver bringing the luggage. And I go, random limo? What are you talking about? She's like, he's like, she thinks that I'm a limo a driver limo hired driver. from a company from Philadelphia. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, I, I, oh, dude, I, I called up my manager, Terry. I was like, fire that English bitch so bad. Like... <laughs> Yeah, and it, do uh, your fucking research. You uh, don't even know the people on the show you're working on. That's no weird. fucking out of it. Well, are you, think bitch? about it. She probably just did Yo Mama on MTV <laughs> and fucking <laughs> Room Raiders yeah. and hiring these 16 year old fucking kids yeah. to say like they probably tell them what to say on that shit. Right, yeah. dude. There's so many worthless MTV shows. I'm yeah. trying to make it a comeback because 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because what they have on television is fucking crap. I've watched some fucking MTV shows. I don't know the names of them, like Laguna Beach or one of them. It sucks. It's so fucking gay that I can feel my dick turning into a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You gotta, you gotta appreciate that. Y you know that there's 12 year olds out there that love that shit. I guess. You know, dude. and you know what? I barely talked to Pharrell Williams, but like he had a brilliant, brilliant quote, and he goes. If you can't appreciate a millionaire for what he's done, then you'll never become a millionaire. That's true. And it is true. And you know what? I appreciate NSYNC. I could see why they sell records, because there's a lot of 12-year-olds out there that, that think Justin Timberlake was handsome. A lot of babies. You know what I mean? Dude, but, but like, some dude is like, <laughs> NSYNC sucks, the riffs are fucking crap, and they're garbage, and they don't deserve anything. It's for just like, 11 year you know what? <laughs> Your attitude, you will never become a millionaire. That's true, because that also, they tend not to uh, go against the grain. You know, like, yeah. the, the, the guys that make a name for themselves aren't doing something somebody already did. You know what's rad? New. The guy who invented that little thing that ties bread up, that little string, he's a millionaire for that. And the oh, combos yeah. guy. The, <laughs> yeah. The guy that invented combos, like Combo? putting the cheese inside the pretzel thing. Yeah, like, all those It's such things. a simple thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, whoever designed that little diagram that puts batteries in that shows you how to do it, that dude's a millionaire for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when's the new CKY record? Uh, we're gonna start, uh, I'm actually cutting drums tonight at Chad. Yes! Yeah. With Roadrunner, but is it, no a, is it a demo or the real thing? Um, I, I believe it's gonna be a demo, but, I mean, once, once we get that down, then I have a good idea of what I'm doing, and then I'll cut real drums, you know? That's yeah. gonna be cool. Yeah, I can't wait. Like, the riffs that I heard so far are fucking amazing, so... Yeah, I heard. I was kind of terrified that CKY was going to go in a more metal direction because that's like Darren's influences and stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's but a blessing in disguise that Darren did World Under Blood yeah, because yeah, he, had, love, he had to, I, he I had to get that project. death metal out of his system. Exactly, and and I love it, dude. I like his side project a lot. I think it's great. And uh, I like it too. Yeah, and 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 but yeah, I like he got he did his metal and and. Because you know he'd probably try and take that shit into CKY stuff. Like, yeah, I know, but but there's but, so but, many metal bands out right now. Dude, like, I, I must say, uh, I mean, it's hard to play. It's brilliant. I appreciate death metal. I love it. I listen to it. Yeah. But Missy, Missy's sister, Missy's friends, <laughs> Missy's mom, Missy's anything. If you want your shows to be. They, a they will long, never understand ever in the entire <laughs> world of. Thank God that's not the case. It's hard to play, but it doesn't sound good to like girls and like old ladies and old men. Right. Well, these new riffs. Maybe a kid who's confused at the age of fifteen who's trying to figure out what his life's all about. He's probably like, I like death metal. You know, like right. They're the only kids that are going to buy it, and good luck trying to sell more than 8,000 copies, because you yeah. ain't going to do it, homeboy. Well, I can say that these new CKY riffs are just classic, awesome CKY, like, just good. Like Volume 1? Yeah, like, it is kind of, like, more Volume 1-y type stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to be into it, then. My favorite record. Volume 1-y. Really? Let's look up 1-y in the dictionary and that's, see if that... I think that's the best album we've done. 1-y. <laughs> <One -y. laughs> <laughs> so, uh... All right, so we got the uh, CKY, we got uh, the cartoon, yeah, we got check you two out, movies. Like, you uh, well, I know you guys. I've listened to the show, so I know you never get into like. Yeah. You can't true. nail it down, and I, I'm always curious. Like, what's Bam up to? Bam, yeah. who has an aunt named Booth, who <laughs> so I call Bam Boofy. But when I say that, no one knows who the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Boofy. Well, the thing is, is that w when when I'm doing something, I'm so fucking busy doing it that like. <laughs> when I when I have, when I have three days to kill, like I just got back from Dubai from my honeymoon, and uh, which I, is right next to Iraq, by the way. Which, 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 There's nothing wrong with it. It's great, true, but yeah. but it was supposed to be like me being drunk and fucking all day. Into it. You got strip searched. <laughs> yeah, I did. Did you get your dick felt up? You know what? I didn't even give a fuck. I was like, you want to see my dick, dude? Go ahead. <laughs> There's no weed tape to it. I don't yeah. even like weed. <laughs> oh, my Whoa, God. That rattled the house. Dude. 
<laughs> There's good acoustics in here. Man. It is. <laughs> good sound room. Play me blood on. Finally, man. something that was. Play me blood on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tune out to Paris Hilton. Fucking. <laughs> Tune her to her Pro Tools ass voice. You know damn well, dude, that she did not sing that shit properly. Dude, it, it, it was probably like computer science trying to get her fucking. Voice probably. To sound good. Definitely. <laughs> Like just a team of they dudes tuned fucking. her voice, dude. <laughs> uh, fucking Jimmy Pop's uh, engineer Jared Little just proved to me so bad that I just sung completely off key and then showed me how on key it was by tuning it in on Pro Tools. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton and cannot me. sing, <laughs> and Jimmy Pop yeah. cannot sing <laughs> at all, and they just got tuned right into Pro Tools and now they look like the man. All right, Jimmy, dude, you should just uh, drink a bottle <laughs> no, of whiskey. I think, no, you, no, because I've seen you live, dude, and, you, and you're on key. We should just Thank record you. a metal song, and you, and you just drink a bottle of whiskey and sing like, <laughs> like fucking hell. Like, you I, know, you get that growly shit when you drink whiskey. I'd be into it, like, Vicodin Skull. Yeah, dude. Vicodin Skull. <laughs> yeah, we'll just all take a bunch of Vicodin <laughs> and do it up. All right. No, what was that name you said? What, that's our band name. What is it? The Ones with Gravy? Yeah, the Ones with Is that what you want to go gravy. with? That's, that is, that's it, dude. Cool. Expect a single soon. What's that? <laughs> The ones with gravy. That's me and Jimmy's new band that we're forming. <laughs> You're forming a band. You want to play no. bass? I was just fucking with it. I'll wanna... play bass. All right, done. Here's no, the Bloodhound Gang on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Turn up the hi-fi, kids. Strap yourselves in and lace up those shoes because you're listening to Radio Banner on Sirius 28 Faction. That was Jimmy and you're a piece of shit. That's your Mark the Bagger? <laughs> you're a piece of shit. Yo, Bam, yo, listen, I know you want me in your movie and everything, but you're going to have to call my agent. <laughs> Sounds like, like, like the Bagger has an agent. Yeah. Did you ever, He's from fucking a run file. Did you ever hear that prank call by the Jerky Boys with that bitch that yells in the background like, He's a piece of shit. That's, like, why, I'm, that's why I'm saying Is that, that what it is? Yeah, uh, fuck yeah. I was out of that trip. Oh, man. Dude, the Jerky Boys, they have some yeah. funny-ass quotes. Like, There's another um, The only price I have is uh, $1,400 for a Hatteras. Fuck him! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you heard that shit? <laughs> Not that one, but yeah. Jerky Boys, Jer absolutely. You remember... I asked <laughs> yeah. I need a dresser because I can't dress up. No, it's like a piece of furniture. Uh, no, my knees and ankles are bad. I need somebody to help me. Do it. No, 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 no. I like. <laughs> I like the, we're gonna die of fart gas. Here. I like. I like the Kizzle when I, <laughs> he's like. I hired this Mexican kid, <laughs> and he's just like, I've been selling this. I've been sending them peanuts to his family, <laughs> and he's like, he's been stealing peanuts. And they, you're, you're a fucking liar! <laughs> Back in WW2, I used to be a seaman. Now I just put it all over my wife's ass. Uh, <laughs> you know what I loved, which I don't think got its, uh... It, it, not enough people know about it is uh, all Di Camillo's calls from oh, Volume dude, Two. Yeah. TKY. Oh, oh my God! Oh, when the when he calls the guy about the medications. You know what? I, oh, I don't even know dude. if you could fucking find that shit. But I mean, go on Google or something. Type Lime in Lime Wire. You can download. What is this? Like, CKY just, Volume Two or something? Yeah. It's like eighty bucks though. Because uh, when that when that guy. Well, it's worth the eighty dollars because it's fucking. Me and Deco doing prank calls at the age of 16 when we were in high school. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, and when, uh, because, like, the Jerky Boys would always do it so it made complete sense, like, even though the conversations were funny. Yeah. But, like, out of nowhere, Deco's having a conversation with this old guy, and he's like, la 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 I just died. There's so much smoke, you crack out, and I all made out. Oh, Vera. But, dude, what sucks is I have all these tapes of... Uh, Deco's prank calls and there's so many good ones that I remember but I can't find the tape like uh, this one time he called this funeral home and he was fucking with the guy there and he's he's just like uh, my wife needs to be moved to you know to the, your funeral home and, and the guy's like well where is she now and he's like She's fucking dead. <laughs> like, like, like you meant to, like you meant like where is her body? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, she, you know, well, she's fucking yeah. dead. <laughs> that kind of shit. Uh, dude, so fucking good. <gasps> and then he calls this roommate. Um, it's like a roommate ad that he responds to, and um, he she, he's like, I have a cat, and uh, I hope you guys don't mind cats. And, and she, the girl's like, Well, what if we don't want a cat? And he's like. Well, what if I don't want to live with you? <laughs> like, that's just so, fucking Deco's humor, dude. Yeah, so God damn it, dude. Deco is fucking 
It's so brilliant. It's so under the radar. It's ridiculous. It is. I know. He wants to be that way. And like the pigeon scene that didn't make it into the Jackass movie. Yeah. That should have been in the fucking that movie. That was amazing. That's that's the best part of Jackass too. And you know what? Shame on Jeff Tremaine for not putting it in because you know you know what people bite themselves in the ass so bad. Yeah. Like like for instance, even Bam's on Holy Union. I'll have Chad come out. He'll show up. We'll film all this brilliant ass shit. And then uh, MTV will, uh, will request to take it out for some certain reason, and you know what? It's like, it's like, dude, you had Chad come out here, and then you're gonna want a second season, and I'm gonna say, hey, Chad, can you come out so we can film because I want to film some shit? And he goes, well, I came all the way the fuck down there, like at least I got 500 bucks or whatever, but like. You know, it, it's a waste of my time because you didn't even put it in it. Right. And you know, yeah. it's like Absolutely. They're, they're kicking themselves in the ass. <laughs> you know what, dude? I hope every MTV motherfucker downloads this shit and hears me because I'm dead serious. <laughs> I, I really am, man. Yeah, dude. This is this is your venting time. Bro. I'm venting. This show is your time to vent. <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> I dude, I tell Penn Darvis from Serious Radio all the time, like, dude, Serious Radio is therapy to me. Yeah. I listen to what I say. I hear if I sound drunk. I hear if I say like too much. I hear if I say um too much. Sometimes you say shit you shouldn't say on here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Big time. Yeah. And you know what, though? Sometimes it works out to my benefit. But besides that, I'll listen. And if I'm telling a story, I'm like, just, dude, I was like sitting there and like this dude came up and he was like, yo, dude. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I just said like 18 billion yeah, times. Like, I need to fucking yeah. calm down. You know, like. It, I, I it, did an interview one time, and do you like how I've forgotten that we're doing a radio show, and I was just listening, like <laughs> I was listening to the yeah, radio yeah. show. What do you mean? I was just listening. I completely forgot that I was supposed to be in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening. I did this interview one time, and in print, <laughs> I saw. What did you eat? Like, like, like. Did you fart again? Yeah, sorry. Jesus. Go ahead. But I saw like. I would say the like a lot, and then in print, the guy would. Oh, that's print. the worst. I was like, you motherfucker, you make me sound like I'm a fucking. Oh, when you say like, like, uh, like yeah, yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you, it's your problem. You yeah, said I like. Know, I have to watch. You're the dipshit. Yeah. You you can but you can, can only take Jesse. Him out. You can only blame yourself. You can fucking Jeez. take him out. It's print. You can't take it out because that's the quote. <laughs> the right. quote is like you said like in the quote, and they're gonna put it in there. Why are you yelling at Jesse? He's gotta go put effort because because he's complaining that. A magazine said, Jess said, I was like sitting there and like I said this. You're the one who said that. <laughs> the only person that you need to blame is yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Fuck it. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> All right. What are we playing? I'll, you know what? I want to hear... Who is it? Isabella's gift. No, no, no. Them too, but, but I really want to hear... What were we listening to in the car? You just did a remix with somebody. Hello, goodbye. Yes. Oh, you want to hear that? Big time. All right. Can we do that? Let's do it. Are you sure it's ready? Yeah, we can go. Cheers. I got it somewhere. Yeah, I'm but I mean, I mean, suppose you have to go search for the disc, and then we have fans sitting here for two minutes listening to dead air. <laughs> Lil, you got it? <laughs> we got it. Well, let's fucking power it out, dude. We're out of here, and you all should be jealous because I'm at Jimmy Pop's house, and we have a whole case of Mickey, Mickey's. <laughs> Mickey's. <laughs> but we don't anymore. Can you edit that out, Lil? Make me say <laughs> Mickey's. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. good. I don't want to say muckers. What were muckers. We, wait a minute, what were we just saying where I just, right before, like, uh, pre, like go back to the Isabel's gift thing. That's where we'll cut it from. Like, yeah. all right, dudes. No, 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 leave it off. Fuck it. Well, that way it will sound re live. We are live. No, but I mean... Yeah, I know. What you, you just said didn't sound live. But you know what? People probably want to listen to this shit. So you know what? Fuck it. Leave it. All right. Okay, good. So what are you saying? Because they're already done listening to a show they thought was live. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck that. Because I, I have to go to Germany on Monday, and my show comes on on Monday. Therefore, I was like, I'm just going to get drunk on a random Saturday and come and see Jimmy Pop. <laughs> and, Saturday. And, and, yeah. Blow, yeah, and just come up to his house and blow up the scene. All right. Hello, goodbye. Uh, hey, and you know what? It's a proper ending because yeah. we're saying goodbye. Yeah, what's the song? All of Your Love. Remix. And you, what did you do on this? I did all the music, put his voice over new music. Well, you're the fucking man. Let's make out. Mike. Let's do it, let's dude. Let's, get, tub. let's take a tubby. Let's yeah. do it. Let's go. Oh, yeah, Radio Bam. We should have done this show from the tub. Let's draw a bath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Radio Bam for this week. We're done. done. Tune in next week for more. Every you can leave now. It's Radio Bam. Radio Bam, everyone. Everyone, everyone.
Radio Bam every Monday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Email me now at Radio Bam. Why don't you uh, take a picture of your sweet white ass and send it on over to Radio Bam at Sirius-Radio.com. Call Radio Bam at 877-PORNBAG. That's 877-PORNBAG. Sweet dreams, Peapod. Bye, everybody. See you next week. On Sirius 28 Faction. Later.